Hi everybody, Debbie here with Garden Style. So it's been a while since I've been in touch with you and today I want to be able to not only bring you up to date but also cover what's going to be happening in 2024 in the garden. I'll cover a number of different topics but first just a little quick update. Uh, the last time I left you folks was back in September. Uh, my brother and I had to go out and pick up my mom who just turned 88 in December and she's now living with me. So needless to say, I've had a lot of time spent getting her settled in, making appointments, driving her places. So mom's in our good care now, but it has also taken my attention away from what I normally do in my videos, let alone running a business at the same time. So it's been quite the challenge, but she's all settled in and now I'm ready to pick it up again for 2024. Our weather here is extremely cold. We are currently 18 degrees outside. It's been that way for the last two or three days. And that's actually mild compared to other parts of the country which are in sub-zero temperatures. So it's kind of hard to think about getting out in the garden when you have weather like that. But January is usually a month where you start to plan. Start planning about what it is you want to accomplish in your garden in 2024. So what I want to do is cover some trends for this upcoming year out in the garden. I can let you know what I am seeing from a nursery or a garden center's point of view. Uh, as an owner, I'm seeing lots of exciting trends starting to appear and then some that are continuing from the last couple of years. So I'm also going to be starting a new series called Grow More in 24. And that's going to come out once a month and that is going to include not only what it is you need to do during that month out in the garden, especially here in the Northwest. I'll be speaking mostly to what to expect in zone eight. Um, and I'll also be covering new plants that are coming out um, and what to do in that particular month when I come out with that video. You know, anything from what to plant, uh, the type of soil you need to use, fertilizing, pruning, you name it. And of course, plants, I'll be covering some uh, new varieties and some new specimens that we, of course, will be getting here in the garden center. So in January, most of your garden centers are starting to receive seeds. So there's something you can plan for right off the bat to start planning what it is you want to plant either indoors or wait for outdoors when the temperatures get warmer. And I hope they will get warmer here pretty soon because it's been downright cold. Um, but also what type of trends I'm starting to see appear uh, at that time of the year. So for instance, when we get started in February, which, you know, just, just the beginning of the ramp up that all of us start for spring, you know, anything from cleaning up the yard to what seeds we want to plant, uh, what needs to be transplanted, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll be covering all of that at least once a month in my Grow More in 24 series. Okay, so what trends are coming up here in 2024? The very top one, number one, is sustainable gardening. As more and more of us get busier in our lives and things are getting more expensive, we're always trying to come up with ways to make gardening not only joyful, something we still enjoy doing, but also make it affordable and something that will keep giving back to us. So that's going to include things like getting the types of plants that are going to give you the most bang for your buck and also less maintenance out in the yard. So sustainable gardens are number one trend uh, going into 2024. What is a sustainable garden? Well, it's something that can almost take care of itself once you have it established. And that would include perennials, grasses, edibles, of course, native plants which will lead to less watering, less fertilizer, less maintenance. And the next few subjects will just fall right underneath that as I get further and further into our trends for 24. So the second trend we're seeing is lawn replacement. More and more people are replacing their front lawns, if not their back lawns. And reason being, we have all discovered that lawns are high maintenance. They're also very expensive to take care of. You're watering them all the time, you're having to fertilize them all the time, you're mowing at least once if not twice a week, especially when we get lots of rain like we do here in the early spring. So more and more people are looking to replace their lawns. 
uh, more and more all the time, we're selling different types of clover. Uh, just your basic white clover is a fantastic lawn replacement because it stays short. It doesn't require mowing. It also attracts bees. So it's a pollinator that you're attracting into the garden. And it adds more oxygen, more nitrogen, and nutrients back into the soil. So it doesn't get any better than that, right? But folks are also using different types of ground covers, uh, you know, four or five different types of thyme, um, which is fantastic for attracting pollinators, especially in the summer. Succulents, if you have a real dry area and you just want to use less water. More and more people are using native plants, which are guaranteed to do well in their particular area. Rocks, <laughs> big rocks, little rocks, medium rocks. Um, to add a little more, uh, what you would call structure to the front garden and also edibles. Lots of folks are starting to learn how to mix in greens like, you know, lettuces, kale, cabbages. Um, they're growing tomatoes. They're doing all kinds of things to replace the lawn out in the front yard and yet at the same time get something back. So we'll be covering lots of that uh, in the upcoming Grow More 24 series. Um, but it's definitely a trend that we're seeing. Uh, coming up this year. Another big trend is going vertical. There are a lot of folks who live in apartments or they're in a small condo or have a small yard. So they need to take advantage of every inch in their garden. So they go vertical using trellises. Trellises are fantastic for strawberries, uh, blueberries, tomatoes, herbs, flowers, uh, all kinds of edibles. Hanging gardens is another way of going vertical and hang it up. Uh, there's nothing better than a cherry tomato and a hanging basket. They just do well. In fact, I think they can actually do better and they'll trail out over the edges and you can munch on them all summer long. So you're seeing more and more of that going on. Um, more folks are putting in trellises or arbors in their vegetable gardens and they're training cucumbers, you know, things like squash, grapes is another big deal, hops all types of things that will give back to you from the garden, which again goes back to sustainable gardening. So going vertical and taking advantage of every inch is a great way to uh, go back into the trends for 2024. Okay, container gardens is no big trend, but they continue to get huge and it's getting bigger and bigger. You're starting to see Container gardens that include flowers and vegetables, or flowers and herbs, things that give back to you. Uh, folks are getting a little more practical in their gardening. It's not all about the decorative objects or the decorative flowers anymore. Folks want to get something back, and let's face it, with inflation and the prices, more and more people want to start growing their own food. And, it, and whether it will sustain you for a whole year or not is not really the point. The point is to be able to save money at the grocery store by being able to grow your own at home. And that way, you know it's been grown organically, it's fresh, and let's face it, there is nothing better than a fresh tomato out of the garden sliced up either on a sandwich or in a salad in the middle of the summer. It just tastes better. It's fantastic. And my personal favorite is broccoli. So I just love growing tons of it in the spring because we eat a ton of it in the spring. So container gardens. So don't be afraid to plant those beautiful decorative flowers, but mix in something sustainable. Herbs is a great thing to start planting with flowers. And you can get herbs that trail over the edges, like thyme. You can plant rosemaries. You can put in mint. There are so many things. In fact, I highly recommend that mint stays in a container and not in the garden, especially here in the Northwest. That stuff can take over in a heartbeat. But you can keep it contained and still be able to enjoy it in your iced tea. So container gardens continue to be big. Um, more and more, you're seeing some fantastic containers coming out that are self-watering, where you can fill them up from the sides and it'll actually keep water uh, into your plants for at least a week, if not two weeks, which really comes in handy, especially if you plan a vacation during the summer. Self-watering containers are definitely something you wanna look into. Um, there are other types of tools that you can use that you can put into the water that will help keep your plants water during the summer if you plan to go away for the weekend, etc, etc. So container gardening continues to be a huge trend in 2024. Now something else that's not a big surprise, but we're starting to see more and more of it, and that is pollinator gardens. 
um, everyone wants to attract the pollinators. We all want to attract the bees and the butterflies. And if you have things like fruit trees in your yard, then that's a huge deal. The more flowers you can plant that will attract the bees and the pollinators, the more fruit you're going to get in the spring and the summer. Beneficial insects are a huge deal, um, not just in pollinator gardens, but any kind of garden. And there's all kinds of beneficial insects out there that I, I highly recommend that you read up on. I'm going to be doing some uh, research myself, and I hope to insert that in my 2024 uh, Grow More series. So definitely want to look into that. So the less we spray, the less chemicals we have to use, the more balanced and the better our gardens will be because of it. So lots of research going into this, and it's a huge trend that's... Uh, not only got started just a couple of years ago, but it's still going strong as we go into 2024. In fact, here in the garden center, we're starting to set aside a whole section of plants and sign it in such a way so that folks know what type of plants are the best pollinators or the best for attracting pollinators into the garden. So we want to make it easier and easier, especially for the novice gardener, to be able to come in and identify what those types of plants would be. So pollinator gardens are huge uh, in 2024. Planting more trees. We're starting to see folks realize, especially those who have just bought a new home and contractors have a tendency to just cut everything down, all the trees, shrubs, anything that used to be there and leave you with nothing but dirt. So folks are learning more and more all the time what types of trees to plant. And trees are not only beneficial to a garden, they're a necessity especially if you live in a hot area you want to start planting your trees in such a way to where you're creating more shade you're attracting more birds and of course you're able to garden underneath the trees or at least beside them a little easier if it's not sitting out there in the baking sun not to mention ourselves you know we can enjoy a nice shade tree and it's not just shade trees there's also evergreens um, which are actually the foundation in your garden and for new gardeners, that's where I highly recommend you start before you even look at a perennial or any types of annuals. Get your basics in first, and those are your foundational trees and shrubs, for that matter, that are evergreen. They're going to hold their own year-round and, of course, create that foundation, that hedge, that fencing, whatever it is you're needing them for in the garden before you even get started elsewhere. So trees uh, for shades, birds, and, of course, fruit. Um, for those of us in the Northwest, the garden centers all start receiving their fruit trees in, whether that be bare root or in a container. They're already starting to roll in. I know we receive ours just before Valentine's Day. And weather permitting, that is usually the perfect time to start planting fruit trees before they get their leaves on them. Not only do they take better, but there's less stress and, of course, free water from Mother Nature. So definitely tune in to the Grow More 24 series in February because I'll be talking a lot about fruit trees and pruning as well as fertilizing and getting your gardens ready for the upcoming spring season. Okay, so those are our top trends in 2024 uh, as far as plants are concerned and gardening. Some other trends that we're starting to notice are terrariums. More and more people are getting interested in terrariums and growing indoors as well as out. You can see behind me, there's a vast variety of houseplants. Uh, for those of us who've been stuck inside in this really super cold weather, but we still want to utilize our green thumbs, houseplants are a great way to go, and they are still trending as well for 2024. More and more people are starting to move away from the really super exotic type of houseplants. Number one, they're getting really expensive. But number two, they're also, some of them can be very difficult to grow. And more and more folks are starting to go back to some of the basic types of houseplants that will put oxygen into the air. They help to freshen the air as well as they look good. They're nice and decorative when they're in the house. So more and more folks are going that direction and terrariums is one way you can do that. Um, indoor gardening uh, with grow lights uh, to grow your own herbs, start your lettuce, your vegetables, seeds, all that type of thing can get started now here in January and terrariums play a big part in that. Now what is a terrarium exactly? It's, it can be an enclosed terrarium or it can be an open terrarium. Enclosed it just kind of creates its own environment on the inside which is less maintenance but an open terrarium not only helps to hold the moisture in, but it's, you can also have a much bigger variety of plants that you can grow. 
So look into that. Um, that's another trend that's starting to come up hot and heavy uh, as far as indoor gardening is concerned here in January. Um, we already discussed containers, uh, colors that we can start talking about and textures. Lots of neutrals hitting the scene this year. We're seeing lots of black and white, a little less gray. We're starting to see gray start to fade out. Uh, we do see blue making a huge hit on the scene this year. But black, white, neutrals, naturals, uh, natural mats, table runners, um, containers. In fact, I kind of have a, here you go. Here's a real good example of natural types of containers as opposed to ceramic or glazed or heavy type containers. Macrame is making a huge comeback. I remember when that was a big deal when I was little. Well, it's coming back in all shapes, sizes, but especially in what we call pot covers like these, um, as well as wall hangings and all sorts of other things that you can do uh, inside as well as outside. So naturals, natural materials, grasses, all that just kind of gives that whole feel for the neutral or natural part of the gardening world. Okay, so that's kind of a brief update as to what you can expect in 2024. Um, I'm looking for, forward to a really good spring. We've had three really rotten springs in a row um, in 23, 22, and 21. They just started out really cold and really wet. And I am hoping what they're predicting, which is an El Nino year for us, although you wouldn't know it now, but you know, you got to slip or freeze in there every now and then, is that we'll have an El Nino spring where we're a little drier and a little warmer so we can get, get out there a little earlier and get more of a head start this coming spring. So that's my hope and my personal prediction that I think this spring is going to be a good one. All right, you guys, of course, if you have any questions, you can put those in the description box down below, uh, or you can email me at gardenstylenwest at gmail.com. I am also the owner operator of sunnycrestnursery.com. You can certainly go to our website there, sign up for our newsletter as one comes out at least once a month, if not twice, depending on how, how much information I really want to get across to you guys. And we let you know about what our sales are, events, all that sort of thing, classes. We have lots of classes we're getting ready to line up from February on. So if you live in the local area, that's something you can definitely take advantage of. And I am considering some classes online or video. So still working on that one. I've got a lot going on at home as well as here at the nursery. And it's just going to get crazier as we get closer and closer to March. So working, thinking about that one. We'll see. Um, I also want to make a couple field trips this coming spring and summer to some growers. Uh, I've gotten lots of invitations. So I want to go out there and kind of give you an idea of what happens in the background before the plants actually get here to the nursery. And I think that would be fascinating and it's something I absolutely love to do. And I always pick up some little extra tidbits of information uh, whenever I pay a visit to them. So there you go. Um, sign up for our new newsletter at sunnycrestnursery.com. And by all, my, all means, hit like and subscribe if you like this channel. Because I my brain is just going berserko with all this information that I want to share with you this coming year. All right. Get out there. Get your hands dirty. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now.